Hello, hello. Hello, good morning. It's Ingrid Owens here. Uh, let me just do this. Let me make sure that's happening. It's all happening. Hey, thank you for watching the replay. I'm so glad you got to join me here this morning. Hello, everybody that is with me live. If you are here watching the replay, go ahead and type hashtag help hashtag replay and let me know any questions or comments that you have as we have a wee chat here this morning excuse me i just sneezed anybody that watches these all the time know that i sneeze or have to blow my nose in every single live i'm not quite sure what that's about but i actually just finished sneezing and i had this scheduled so it's going live so excuse my red nose so good morning, wherever you are, welcome to Biz Talk Tuesday. It's Ingrid Owens here, and in case we've never met before, I am a business coach and marketing strategist, and I work specifically with creative entrepreneurs or people who are trying and dreaming and um, trying to achieve their dream of creating a, a, or starting a creative business. Um, and I am excited to be here for another Biz Talk Tuesday. And I wasn't too sure what we were going to chat about this morning. So um, I something just came to me when I was brushing my teeth. So we're going to go with that, which is kind of tied in with what, what I'm talking about. But if you are joining me live, please let me know where you're joining me from. Type in the comments. It's always so much nicer when I've got company here uh, that I can chat to. Um, I do go live here every Tuesday morning for Biz Talk Tuesday. Sometimes it's a 10 a.m. Sometimes it's a little later, but I um, always endeavor to be here and we're settling, I think, at around that 10 o'clock time. So today what I wanted to talk about is something that affects all entrepreneurs and at every level in their business. And it also affects regular people too. But I think in being an entrepreneur, we have to be even more um, attuned to this thing. And uh, there's a lot of talk about it right now. If you um, are online in any capacity, um, talking about starting a business, kind of doing some research around that, this word comes up a lot. And um, the last couple of weeks, you've heard me talk about fear. And that's one of the things that stops a lot of people uh, from starting their business. But one of the big things that is connected to that is this whole concept of mindset. Now, mindset is something that it's to me in the coaching world, it, you know, that it, it's become like another just a regular word. But I do remember the first time I heard this concept of mindset. Um, and it's not always clear what is meant by mindset. And especially as, um, you know, an, an entrepreneur, you have to be very, very particular about your mindset and having the right mindset. And it's like, okay, well, does that just mean positive thinking? And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that today. If you have come across this notion of mindset, or if you're wondering how to control or um, manipulate your mindset, it's a lot more than just positive thoughts. So, First of all, I thought we could break it down and have a look and see what mindset is. Well, what mindset actually is, is a collection of your thoughts and how you approach the world. It's a collection of your beliefs. Okay, so as we're walking through the world and through life, we all have a set of beliefs and some of them are serving us, serving us and some of them are not serving us. So, for example, we all believe um like the world is round. Pretty much now that's a belief that everybody has chosen to accept as, you know, truth, as universal truth. But there's things that um we believe that are true that aren't necessarily universal truths. For example, you might believe that $5,000 is a lot of money. And to somebody who is just about to buy a house or is to buy, uh, maybe is buying their fourth or fifth house, $5,000 to for a house is not an awful lot of money. So it, you got to have that perspective, right? Or even to a millionaire or, you know, somebody that earns a lot more money than you, $5,000 might not be a lot of money, right? Uh, you could have beliefs around money. You can beliefs, have beliefs around health. You can have beliefs around family, of, of around all sorts of things that may or may not be serving you. And we get these beliefs, um, 
in in several different ways you know a lot of times it's that whole nature versus nurture sometimes people are um predisposed to be um uh, maybe have negative belief negative self talk all of that sometimes it comes from our family and our genetics and depending on who you believe it could be uh people that i'm just looking i can see somebody going to my door but i think he's going to check the meter <laughs> <laughs> just I'll hide them from you uh it could be beliefs that uh you adopt because of the people that you're hanging around or your circumstances but to quite often it's because of rep repetition right and when we're children we absorb the beliefs of our parents um, on the most part you know unless you're kind of um a very wayward child and you you kind of really push against that um or not even wayward if it if it was a positive if it was a negative impact, you could be very positive minded. Um, but it, typically we, we adopt the beliefs of our parents. So that's what um, a mindset is. It's pretty much a set of beliefs. And there's a particular set of a mindset that you need when you're working for yourself and when you're being an entrepreneur, because it's not the same mindset as somebody who goes to a day to day job might have. And, you know, that's for so many different reasons. Um, it could be maybe that you're just w working by yourself. It's because you have to put yourself out there a lot more. It's because you're being vulnerable in, in ways that, because you're sharing your work or your skills that you might not necessarily have to do if you're working in a jobby job, right? So there's a whole set of my, a mindset that, um, you have to have as an entrepreneur that doesn't necessarily fit as the mindset for a, a regular working person. So what we're talking about today is this entrepreneurial mindset. And so you really want to cultivate this entrepreneurial mindset. And the way that we do that, um, I've outlined some, some three different ways, right? So the first thing is that you want to become aware of what your mindset currently is. You want to become aware of what your current set of beliefs are, okay? And so we can become aware in several different ways. It helps if you uh, can get some quiet time, if you can meditate. I like to meditate. I use a great app on my phone called Insight Timer. If you've never used it before, it really helps you to get still. Some of those are guided meditations. Some of them are just like bells and intervals, <clears throat> excuse me, letting you talk and be still. Some people like to pray. People like to go, you know, to their quiet space just for contemplation. But when you become still, you can become aware of your thoughts in a much, much greater detail than if you are, you know, just lost in that everyday chatter. So the first thing is awareness, like every issue or in any situation, you want to first become aware and becoming aware of your mindset will allow you to see where beliefs are sneaking in and maybe they're not serving you the way that you think you sh they, they could be, right? Because of what it might take to be an entrepreneur. So the first thing, like I said, become aware. The second thing then is to really challenge and to question those beliefs. Now, by nature, I'm a challenging, questioning person. Not everybody necessarily is. I do think that a lot of times if you have a drive to become a, an, an entrepreneur, you do have that questioning and you like to challenge the, the status quo, that's how innovation uh, comes about and all of that, right? You know, because we don't just accept things as they are. But sometimes we forget about things like within and it can be very um, enlightening to question beliefs and if they're serving you. Now, if you can do it through your own contemplation, that's great. Um, like with meditation and all of that. Sometimes it takes somebody else to call us out on our own BS. And that's where working with a coach can really help. Any coach that's worth their salt is not just going to provide accountability and guidance. They're going to really hold you accountable to that thought, those thoughts that you're, um, that you're uh, thinking and they're going to be intuitively aligned to that and, and understand and hear and recognize those patterns and call you out on it. And sometimes it really does take somebody else to, to do that. Um, 
for me, I've made tremendous growth in the last couple of years because of working with a coach. Um, and before that, I've had always had peers and people who, um, who I've worked with in independently, like, you know, friends and really good biz besties that really helped me and my sister and my family are really good at, 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 you know, that sort of coaching relationship. And my sister is a coach as well. So, um, but you do, if you don't have somebody who can call you out on that negative thought pattern, um, then you need to find that person because it is so important. We don't so much, we don't see our own crap. Like it's just hidden and, um, and that's okay. But if it's not serving you, and this is the question that you ask yourself and that a coach will ask you is how is that belief serving you? So for example, you might think that you don't need to show up um, and be the face of your product. Say if you're selling your services, maybe you're a photographer and you're like, well, I'm just a photographer. I can stay hidden behind the camera. I don't need to show up. And then maybe you're just not making those connections with the people who you want to meet, right? And who you want to become clients. So by not showing up, you're not being able to make those connections and therefore that belief is not serving you. So you have to kind of question, well, where did that belief come from? Did you um, somehow inherit that? Or is there something that's going on that's deeper? And most of the times that's the case. And that requires, involves a lot of, um, or a little or a lot of, of self discoverment, uh, a little digging around and just trying to figure out what exactly is going on. So we challenge the belief that, um, is it really serving you? And, um, I recommend the way that I do that, if you don't have a coach or somebody that you can talk to about that is journaling. Like I just journal everything. My journal is like my best friend. And part of that is because um, I, I feel like I'm quite in tune to my intuition and I can talk to my intuition through my journal and I can kind of have those real conversations with myself. And sometimes, um, that sounds really crazy, but sometimes, um, my journal, you know, I can get into a flow of writing and the questions and the answers come out, um, on the pages that when it's all in my head, it doesn't come out the same way when I'm just caught up in my head. So I always encourage everybody to write your thoughts. It's very, very enlightening. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we become aware of our mindset by getting still, by listening and maybe having somebody else call us out on it. Uh, we question it, uh, either ourselves or somebody else. And then the thing is, is that you need to change the program, right? Because it's this set of beliefs, this mindset, it's like pre-programmed and quite often these, this pre-programming happens when we're a young child, which really scares me because I have two young children and I am constantly thinking about what on earth am I programming these kids with? Because, you know, we're only human, right? We try our best. I try my best, but like sometimes they pick up on stuff that they might not necessarily need to, you know, negative stuff, whatever. So we are always trying to cult cultivate this growth mindset in our children so that everything is possible and they can achieve whatever they want, right? And, and likewise with ourselves. So you have to change and reprogram your, your own mindset. So taking that negative belief um, that you have, or just that belief, we'll not even give it a, a, um, a positive, a, a, a charge, negative or positive, right? but challenging it and replacing it with something else. And I think that's the key thing because quite often, you know, we can beat ourselves up about challenging a belief and it's like, oh, I shouldn't believe that. Oh, I need to do, 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 do this. When in reality, we're like, we should, like, um, whoops, we should love and accept ourselves and say, okay, well, I see. Again, it's that brain, right? Trying to keep us safe quite often, that reptilian brain. I appreciate what you're trying to do. Thank you. But here's what I'm going to believe from now on. And that's where you'll hear a lot of times people saying affirmations and replacing those negative um, or those other former beliefs with a positive connotation or with a positive um, affirmation. Like I can show up and be present for my company to grow. I can be visible and the right people will be attracted to me. 
you know, just replacing those beliefs. And, and, and you have to work because you've got to believe them because affirmations don't work if you don't believe them. There's a really funny sketch going around. I think it's from Catherine, um, I think she's Catherine Tate, you know, the comedian in the UK. And it's this woman like doing her affirmations. And then there's some other little, you know, that mean girl in the mirror, um, like, oh, no, you don't believe that. And like, I believe I love and accept myself. And this little mean person in the corner going, no, that's not true. So I will find that and post that. It's very funny. But the truth is, is that you do have to believe it. So if you don't believe like um, the, you know, if it's a stretch to believe, <coughs> excuse me, getting caught up in my joke. If it's a stretch to believe the thing that you want to believe, right? The big thing, like $5,000 is not a lot of money, right? If that's your issue, then chunk it down a little bit less. So then like, you know, you could say, well, you know, $500 isn't a lot of money. $1,000 isn't a lot of money and work your way up to thinking of, about that bigger belief. But you must believe it yourself, right, to change your affirmation. So I hope that made sense. It was something that was on my heart to talk about today. Like I said, it really literally just came to me 10 minutes ago before I brushed my teeth. And I was like, mm, this would be a good thing. Because I do think that a lot of people who are starting out in their entrepreneurial path, you might hear that mindset, but you might not have realized what it was and how we can handle it and, and, and have a handle on it as an entrepreneur. The key is is calling yourself out on your own bullshit and stopping letting it stop you making the progress forward towards the dreams that you know you want. So that is all I have for you today. Nice, short and sweet. I'm sorry that uh, we didn't have much interaction, but if you have any thoughts on mindset, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Um, I will get back to you and answer everybody that comments. I love to do that. I love to engage. If you are interested in starting your own creative business or if you've started but it hasn't really reached the potential that you want, I am running a new group program beginning the 1st of October called From Idea to Business. It's going to be amazing. I am so excited about it. It is going to be a group of entrepreneurs getting together, a small growing their business, co coming up with a plan, figuring out everything that you should be doing and could be doing to grow your business, but in a way that's aligned with you. Because I'm not going to tell you there's one size fits all. That's the absolute, like, not truth. There is no one size fits all. So it's very important that you get the plan that fits you and your family, your life and your values. And that's what we're going to work on together. Um, it starts, like I say, October 1st. It's a coaching program. Um, so lots of hands-on work, but lots of mindset work too. And if you're interested in that, I would love if you, um, you want to reach out to me, we can have a chat or you can put your name on the wait list and then we can get in touch and uh, we can let you know because there will be some special offers for people who um, take fast action and sign up first. I do want to keep it small and intimate. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next week for another Biz Talk Tuesday and maybe before that as well. Have a great one.